Well, the tide's probably just a little bit high for me this afternoon, but I'm still going to go out there and have a crack at some Darwin land-based fishing. The target species, well, it's a rare breed. The last few years, there's only been one out there, but this year, the population has exploded. There are five of them out there now. You know exactly what I'm talking about. We're going straight to the top, straight for the $1 million. It's the million dollar fish. to be fishing the run out tide which isn't for another 40 minutes so I have a little bit of time to kill. Well I am packing fairly light today. Pretty much everything I can fit in that bag is what's coming with me from lip grippers. I've got a spare rod there, fishing gear in here. third camera, probably a bit of overkill, but I've got the third camera, I've got that one, my chest cam, I've got one up there as well looking back at me. I've been here once before, remember what happened last time I was here? Thongs was a bad idea. Swapping out the pluggers. The shoes. This is the rod I'm bringing with me today. It's a big bastard, 10 footer or seven, uh, nine foot seven. They talk about the jelly prawns being prolific here at certain times of the year in the harbour. So we'll give him a little run first up today, I reckon, to see if we're potentially matching the bait that's in the water. Here's a five second lesson. Little granny knot, put your lure on, go back through the hole, then another granny knot. Trim your tag off, and then you've got a nice little loop there to give the lure a chance to move around freely how it wants to. I reckon last time I was here the tide must have been heaps lower. I reckon I was out way past the tip of those mangroves way out there. Um, I think it'll be dark by the time the water gets that low. So we might just start flicking around these mangroves straight ahead of us. Okay, so here's the theory. All of the millions of little bits of bait that are up here in the shallows, as the tide drops, all of them are forced to move out and they'll be forced through little gutters and things like that. The barra should be outside of the gutters waiting for all the bait to come through. Been here a couple of hours now, no real action. I've had a couple of hits from little rats, little small barra, no hookups. The tide is doing what it's meant to be doing. It's going out, but I want to be out further. I want to be out there. Well, we're going for take two today. Uh, going down to the rocks again to have a bit of a fish. Got little baby Arthur in the back. Uh, just going to drop him off at the grandparents' place and see if we can catch the last hour of the run out tide. <gasps> it's okay, buddy, we're almost there. Crikey. Well, I've walked a fair way along these rocks. The tide is a lot lower than I thought it would be. I didn't realise it would look quite like this. Oh man. Did I mention how unfit I am? Oh. I reckon the perfect tide to be here 
fishing would be when the water, when you can stand on this ledge along here and fish into the shallow flats. That would be ideal. Two days ago, I was fishing 250 meters that way, up behind that first little layer of mangroves there. That's unbelievable. Not gonna give up on this spot. We'll come back another day when I think the tide's just right. So today, probably a bit low. Two days ago, probably a bit high. Let's go for somewhere in between next time. Zero, zero, one. Wonderful. <laughs> so what's the go with the phone number? Good question. If you do end up catching a tag barra, it's the hotline you ring. You read the code that's on the tag, quote the number to them and they let you know if you've won. I'm pretty sure the guy on the other end is the bloke that makes those oversized checks. He's gonna need to add a couple more zeros for me. So on day one, I was fishing way up at that tree line up there. That's how high the water was. A Couple of days later, I went fishing and the mud flats went out a good kilometre out there. I walked out there and caught nothing. This is that rock ledge just here that I mentioned on day two that I thought might be in the Goldilocks zone. The porridge isn't too hot and it isn't too cold. It should be just right. Yep, on. He's gone straight under a rock. Still on? So, oh, it's a cod. Just hooked up to this little baby cod. As you can see, the water's really clear. Beautiful little cod. It would be already out of spot to a little hard bodied lure. That one's actually made local here in the NT. That was my first cast with it. And little Mr. Cod here couldn't resist. There you go, off you go, buddy. Straight under the rock below me. Yep. He's on. Stay out of the rocks, buddy. Stay out of the rocks. Stay up, 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 up. That's oh, a little cod again. Well, while he is a beautiful little fish, he's not going to win me the million bucks. There you go, folks. That's cod number three. Off he goes. Yep. Oh, does that feel better? No, it doesn't. It really, really doesn't. When fishing pretty much any waterway in the Northern Territory, whether it's salt or fresh, being crockwise is of pretty high importance. I've got some really clear water just here, so I feel fairly safe. If this water was dirty, like on a riverbank or something like that, there's no way I'd be standing this close to the water. Those crocodiles can close gaps really quickly. I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but it's definitely something that you need to be mindful of. Oh, oh that was hits. Being crockwise, something to be mindful of. It'd certainly put a dampener on your trip if you or one of your family members got taken by a bloody croc. Crikey. Oh, hit. Oh, come on. Yep. Oh. Damn. Yep, on. Off. Well, since I put the big shrimp on, my hookup rate has been really bad. I've had lots of hits, but no hookups. So I'm gonna swap out that one for the smaller shrimp. 
and see if my hookup rate improves again. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Well, if we don't catch the million dollar fish today, there are 100 consolation prizes. There's a hundred ten thousand dollar fish out there. It's quite crazy to think about it that somewhere out here swimming right past me right now. That could be it. That could be it. Oh, it's a cod. <laughs> oh dear. That's not the million dollar fish. <laughs> the exciting thing is though that a kilometre that way, land based, someone caught a ten thousand dollar fish a couple of years ago in the million dollar fish campaign. And then a couple of kilometres that way, local land-based fishing legend here in Darwin, Hero, he caught his $10,000 fish off the rocks just down here. So just because you don't have a boat doesn't mean you're not in with a chance. Yep, on. Oh, it's tiny, is it? Yep. Oh my God. Oh, now, you, now you're just mucking around with me, aren't you? Okay, is that not the smallest cod you've ever seen? These things grow to like 100 kilos. That one would not be 100 grams. Oh, he bit me, the bastard. Whoop, beautiful. Oh, bigger fish. That's a cod still, but he smashed that. Nice little cod. Well, I've got my missus and the baby waiting at the car. They went for a bit of a walk while I had a fish. I would assume that the little guy is getting pretty sick of waiting around. So we are getting close to the last cast. Oh no. Well, I was about to say this will be the last cast, folks, but it looks like I might not get this lure back. No, he's gone. Oh yeah. Well it was just not to be today folks, I'm obviously not meant to catch the million dollar fish today. There's always next time. As far as an afternoon fishing went, it was great fun, those cod kept me entertained for quite a while. If you do plan on coming out here and trying to catch the million dollar fish, make sure you jump on the million dollar fish website and register. You'll be glad you did if you pull an embarra with a tag in it. I'm Michael Cunningham and thanks for watching.